Okay, welcome back. Uh, now we're in the last section of this chapter on hypothesis testing for one population. Um, in this section, we're going to talk about hypothesis testing for a population standard deviation or variance for that matter. Now, the one thing to note here is standard deviations don't have a distribution that is normal. In fact, they have a distribution that is a chi-square distribution just like we discovered in the previous chapter when dealing with confidence intervals. Now we can get right into the six steps here. If a claim is made regarding a population standard deviation or a variance, then we can use the p-value approach to test the claim, provided that the sample is coming from a simple random sample. And also there's a very strict requirement that the population has to be normally distributed. You can't get around this by just having a sample size that's greater than 30. So there's a very strict requirement that the population is from a normal distribution. All right, so let's go right into the steps here. Step one is our hypothesis test. You have one of the three options there. Step two, we identify your significance level. Now step three is going to be a chi-squared test step, and that is going to be our sample size minus one, the sample standard deviation, and the population standard deviation. So in all the previous test sets, we had a difference between what we see from the null hypothesis and what we see in real life from our data, right? Uh, so th in this case, it's more of a ratio between what we see from our data and what we see in the null hypothesis. And in step four, we're gonna draw a picture and we're gonna use our calculator to find the p-value. Okay, now the thing about this question here is that now in your calculator, there is no test for the population standard deviation. However, if you were in my class, I would give you a program called Math200B, and I would just transfer that over to your calculator. Now there is a workaround if you don't have this program. You can use chi-squared CDF on your calculator in order to just calculate the p-value. But the test set itself, you'll have to do it by hand. All right, and then step five, we just make a decision by comparing the p-value to the alpha. And step six is we come up with a conclusion statement. All right, let's just get right into an example. All right, example one. A can of 7-Up states that, that the contents of the can are 355 milliliters. While the company knows that the quantities in the can follow a normal distribution. All right, that's good. A quality control engineer is worried that the filling machine is miscalibrated. In other words, she wants to make sure that the machine is not under or overfilling the cans. So she randomly selects nine cans of 7-Up, measures the contents, and obtains the following data. So this is the amount of milliliters from each one of the cans. There are, in this case, nine cans here, right? This is our data. Nine cans. Test the claim that the population standard deviation is greater than 3.2 milliliters at a 5% level of significance. So the question here is that the claim is that the population standard deviation sigma is greater than 3.2 milliliters. That is your claim statement right there. All right, the conditions here are, there are only two. We have to have a simple random sample and there is a very strict condition that the population has to be from a normal distribution, which we do see that that's true also. So we can go right into step one the null hypothesis versus the alternative. This is a claim on a standard deviation, so we're talking about a standard deviation here. The null hypothesis has the condition of equality, and in our case, they are suggesting that it is greater than 3.2, so greater than 3.2, and that is the claim statement. That matches up with what we have in the highlighted sentence there. And the null hypothesis has to match up, and that is your step one. Step two is identify our significance level, which in this case is 0 0.05. Step three, we're going to come up with our test stat. And our test stat for test on a population standard deviation, we have a chi squared, and that is n minus one times sample standard deviation squared over sigma squared. Again, this comes from data, and this comes from the null hypothesis. All right, so let's go ahead and catalog what we need here. We need the sample size, sample standard deviation, and the population standard deviation from the null hypothesis. Well, that's the easy one to copy down. So that's just 3.2. Sample size, well, they said that there was, what, nine cans. 
And how do we get the sample standard deviation? Well, we have data, right? So if we use one of our stats, we can calculate S. Okay, let's just go through that process just to remind you how that was done. Let's go into the calculator. Okay, we're here on the calculator. Let's go to stat, let's go to edit. Let's go ahead and clear out that list. And let's just go ahead and type in our data. Okay, again, always double check your inputs. Take your time with this. You don't wanna really rush through this. Okay. So I have my data in there. If I quit out of this, go back to stat, and then we're gonna calculate the one var statistics. And we have list one. Let's go ahead and change it to L1. Frequency, you can keep that blank. And if you just calculate, what do we get? Well, we're not interested in the mean or anything, but we are interested in the sample standard deviation, which is at 3.464. Okay, they also give you the population standard deviation, but of course, this just calculates both of them because it doesn't know if we have a sample or a population, so it does both calculations for us. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and retain more decimals than necessary. Let's go with like five decimals. 3.46410. Okay, and I'm going to put a little note here that I got this from one bar stats. All right, let's actually just go ahead and calculate this in our calculator. We'll just do n minus 1, which is 8 times this number, 3.46410 squared divided by 3.2 squared. And if you run that through your calculator, what do we get? I get something like 9.37 when rounded to two decimal places. That's our test step. Okay. In step four, we're going to go ahead and draw this picture. So now, how do we draw this picture for a chi squared? Chi squares are not symmetrical, they're not bell shaped. Okay, so we have to have a vertical axis, a horizontal axis. It does start from zero, so we do have to label the zero, okay? And what kind of tail test is this? Well, this is a right tail test. Now, this test set of 9.37, okay, how do you know where to place this along this horizontal axis? I know zero is all the way to the far left. 9.37, I'm not sure if it's before that peak, if it's after the peak. Well, my rule of thumb is if S is greater than sigma, then we're going to draw this test stat to the right of the peak. Okay. Now, if S is less than sigma, we're going to draw it to the left of the peak, somewhere around here. Okay. And that's not always 100% true because that peak doesn't really represent the 50% mark. But that's generally true. The idea behind that is that this is a ratio, right? This test stat is an, a ratio between S and sigma. So if that S is much larger than the sigma, then this ratio is much larger, so it's going to be further away from zero. So much, it'll be much farther away from zero. And if that S is less than sigma, it's going to be closer to zero. All right, where zero is here and here. That's the basic idea behind that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and start to label this now. Now, we're going to label this 9.37 right here. And as mentioned before, this is going to be a right tail test from the alternative. Literally point in the direction that we're going to shade. Okay. And then to come up with this area, well, this is the p value. Now, the p value can be calculated using, well, in this case, is we have a chi squared. There is a function in our calculator that is chi squared CDF. Okay. Um, it'll have a lower bound, an upper, and then degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, in our case, the lower bound of the shaded region is at 9.37. The upper, well, it goes all the way up to infinity. So we know that as an E99 in our calculator. And the degrees of freedom is always uh, N minus 1. So in our case, the N is 9, so 9 minus 1 is 8. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the calculator and see how that's done. All right, so starting from the home screen, if you go to second distribution, and go all the way down to you see a chi-squared CDF, right? We're going to accumulate all the way from our lower bound to our upper bound. So we have our lower of 9.37. Upper is going to be E99. Again, if your calculator doesn't have this interface where you can just enter the numbers in, 
Uh, then you want to put it in just the way that you see it on the page there, with, separated by commas. Second E, 99. Degrees of freedom are 8. And if we calculate that, what do we get? Now, there probably could be a little bit of error here. Our test out of 9.37, uh, I probably rounded that way too prematurely in this case. And if we actually had a calculator function built into the TI, it avoids all that premature rounding stuff. Okay, so that's why I prefer that they have those functions like that, because then you don't have to retain so many decimal places. Okay, so I'll just use this right here. 0.3121. All right, so that's a complete step four. We have the correct shape of the graph. It's skewed to the right here, starting with zero all the way in the far left. We have our test stat. The position of our test stat, we kind of use this guideline here to help us out with that. We are shading in the correct direction because our alternative tells us to shade to the right. And the area of that region is called the p-value. Okay, And that is, in this case, calculated using the chi-squared CDF. Okay, um, and that's 0 0.3121. Now that p-value represents the probability of us committing an error if we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, there's a 31%, 31.21% chance that if we reject that the standard deviation is 3.2, then we would be wrong in that decision. So, yeah, that's too high of a probability for us to be wrong. So we're not going to make that decision. So we'll make that decision by comparing the p-value to our significance level. The significance level in this case was 0 0.05, the p-value being 0 0.3121. That's greater than that. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the conclusion statement here, if we follow that flowchart, let's go to that flowchart really quick, because our Alternative was a claim, right? And we failed to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so the alternative was a claim, so we're going to go in this direction. And we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So our conclusion statement starts off with, there is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, and then we restate the original claim. And what was that claim statement? Hopefully I highlighted it. Yeah, here it is. That the population standard deviation sigma is greater than 3.2 milliliters. Again, here in this problem, if you want to get a more accurate p-value, I would retain more decimal places for that, that test. That, that way you can enter it into that chi-square CDF and just get a slightly more accurate p-value. Okay. All right, let's do another one here. It says that the standard deviation of math scores at one high school is 16.1. Okay. Assume the math scores follow a normal distribution. Okay, that's nice. That's going to be one of our conditions. A uh, teacher claims that the standard deviation of girls' scores is smaller than 16.1, okay? A simple random sample of 22 girls results in scores with standard deviations of 12.9. Use a 0 .01 significance level to test the teacher's claim. All right, so they're saying that the standard deviation of math scores at this school is 16.1. That's a known quantity. And we are to assume that these scores follow a normal distribution. Now here's the claim statement. The, the teacher claims that the standard deviation of girls' scores is smaller than 16.1. So again, a standard deviation is a measure of spread. So overall, the high school has a standard deviation of 16.1, but this teacher thinks that the scores vary less for girls' scores. Okay, so it's less than that 16.1. This doesn't mean that average score, the mean score is less than 16.1. It's just that these their values tend to vary less from one individual to the other. Now when they actually sampled 22 girls, the scores did have a standard deviation that was less than 16.1. They actually found that it was 12.9, but we're trying to find out if that 12.9 is significantly less than 16.1. And if so, then we can actually support that claim. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, so do we have a random sample? Yeah, random sample. And the population was normal. Okay, let's start with step one. And that is our hypothesis statement. Okay, 
So hopefully by now you're getting a hang of this, right? It's always the same six steps, okay? Hypothesis statements, step two, significance level, step three, test that, step four, draw a picture, step five, make a decision, and step six, write your conclusion statement. Very systematic. All right, this is a claim on a standard deviation. So we're talking about standard deviation here, okay? Uh, the null hypothesis has the quality. And the alternative in this case, well, what's the claim statement suggest? That the standard deviation of girls' scores is smaller than 16.1. So this is suggesting that the standard deviation is less than 16.1. And that is what is mentioned in the claim statement. So let's go ahead and label that. And in the null hypothesis, we're going to have also 16.1. Again, these two numbers always match. Step two, we're going to have our significance level. In our case, they say it's going to be a 0.01. Okay, so they really don't want to be wrong in their decision. Step three, we are going to come up with our test stat. And for standard deviations, the test stat follows a chi squared, and that is n minus one times s squared over sigma squared. Again, this comes from the null hypothesis. This comes from our sample data. Okay, let's go ahead and catalog all those values here. Our sample size, what was the sample size? Well, it looks like they took 22 girls' scores. And what was the sample standard deviation? So from these 22 girls, the standard deviation was that it was 12.9. Okay. And this sigma comes from the null hypothesis, which is 16.1. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So in this case, I am going to retain a little bit more decimal places than needed. So we get, what, 21 times... 12.9 squared over 16.1 squared. Now, if they ever give you a variance and to find S or sigma, then you just take the square root of that and then you would use that number. All right, so I get something like 13.481. I'm going to do five decimal places, seven, seven. Okay, that's a complete step three. In step four, well, for a chi squared, what shape do we have? Well, it is always skewed to the right, starting from zero. So vertical axis, here's zero. It's going to peak somewhere around here and go off to the right. Now, using my rule of thumb on where to position this test at, if S is, again, if it's less than sigma, then this ratio is smaller. So that means this test at is closer to zero. So that means that'll be around to the left of the peak. Again, this isn't universal, it's just more of a rule of thumb. S is greater than sigma, then this test at is further away from zero. So it should be further from the peak here. So in our case, the S is, greater, is less than the sigma, so it's gonna be uh, this version here. So that test at should be somewhere around here, I would say that 13.48177. Okay, and what are they actually looking for? Well, are we gonna shade to the left or to the right? Well, left because it's less than. So we want this shaded region, right? And what is that shaded region? Well, that's the p-value. And chi-squared distribution to find the area underneath the chi-squared di distribution. We're going to use chi-squared CDF, just like in the previous problem. We have a lower, we have an upper, and we have degrees of freedom. Uh, lower in this case is zero, right, because it starts from zero. Upper, 13.48177. Degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So in our case, 22 minus one is 21. All right, let's run that through our calculator here. If we run that through your calculator, we get 0 0.1092. Okay, so that's about 10%. All right, so what does that tell us as far as our decision is concerned? Well, in our decision, we make that by comparing our p-value to our significance level, p-value being 0 0.1092. Significance level was 
uh, 0 0.01. This is greater than that. Okay. Uh, we were only willing to be wrong in our decision up to a 1% chance. This was close to 11%, 10.92% chance of us being wrong if we reject the null hypothesis. We're not willing to take that risk, so we are going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. So if we can't reject the null hypothesis, so we in a way think of that as accepting that standard deviation is still 16.1 for girls. Okay, so we're not going to be able to support that claim. Okay, again, we can go through that flow chart again. There is not sufficient sample evidence to support the claim that, and then we have our claim statement, which is the standard deviation of girls scores is smaller than 16.1. Okay, thanks for watching.